I think we're finally to the point where we can start to actually build something. So I'm going to click on level four, delete that. And we're going to go to level one view. And by the way, I don't think I explicitly said this, but to go to a view in the project browser, you're just double clicking on the, on the view in the project browser. Now we're going to draw some walls on the handout, the page that you should be looking at is A2.1. So on this drawing, you can see that I have the position of where all the walls are supposed to be. So you can be very precise and you can place all the walls according to these dimensions. But before we get to that point, I'm just going to explain just in general how to build walls. So I'm going to go over here to the side and just kind of build some walls randomly over here. Walls are located on the Architecture tab, and it's the very first button right here, so you just click on Wall. Now, as architects, I highly recommend that you only use architectural walls. You have the choice of using structural, but they can cause problems or just add complexity to your project, so I highly recommend that you always use architectural walls for everything. Once you choose the architectural wall, then you have a choice of which walls to use on the project. Now in this particular project, I have a wall type called generic six inch. That is the wall type that we're going to use for today. So I'm going to select generic six inch. Below the ribbon right here, you have what's called the options bar. And on the options bar is where you need to check and make sure that all of the settings for the wall that you are about to draw are correct. So the first thing you have to select is what is the height of the wall? So I'm going to go ahead and say, I want this wall to start at level one. Walls are always going to start at the view that you're in. So I'm in level one. So by default, the wall is going to start at level one. And then I'm going to say, go up to roof. So it's going to go up to the roof level. And then I'm going to tell it what the location line is. Now the location line is the line that the wall actually is drawn on. So is it the wall center line? Is it the core center line? Finish face, exterior interior, or core face, exterior interior? Now what is core? Well, it can mean multiple things, but usually what it means is what is the structure of the wall. So even if it's an interior partition, it's technically not structural, it is what's holding the wall up. So in the, in the case of an interior partition wall, the core would be the steel stud. And then any, anything beyond that is finish. So for example, if you have a wall that has steel studs, one layer of jet board on one side, two layers of jet board on the other, you've got an asymmetrical wall. So therefore your core center line is not the same place as your wall center line because your wall center line is measured from outside face to outside face. Now, finish face exterior, finish face interior should be very obvious. That's face of finish. And then the core face is in the example of the exterior or the uh, interior partition, it's face of stud, exterior, interior. Even for interior partitions, Revit has an exterior and an interior side for walls. Every single wall in Revit has an exterior and an interior side. Um, so you have to keep that in mind as well. Today, we're going to use wall center line. And then you just click two points in your floor plan view, and it draws a wall. And notice when I'm drawing this wall, see how that blue dashed line appears, and it's going right down the center of the wall? That is the location line. That's where it's actually drawing the wall. And I can just keep on clicking, and it just keeps on drawing walls until I tell it to stop. Now the universal stop doing that button in Revit is escape. So whatever you're doing, if you don't want to stop doing it, you just hit escape once and notice how I am still in the wall command because I just pressed escape once. I know that I'm in the wall command because it's context menu is still visible right here. So if I click again, it just starts right back up again. However, if I want to get out of the wall command completely, and just go all the way back to nothing, I hit escape twice. And that gets me back to kind of the default state. If I go to the 3D view, click on the house, and zoom out here, you can see the walls that I built over to the side here are in fact 
three-dimensional. Now if I change the parameters of that wall, and what I mean is if I change it to say finish face exterior, and then I start to draw a wall, you can see how that location line now is to the side of the wall. Now if it's drawing the wall to the wrong side, all you have to do is before you actually make that second click, press the space bar and it flips the wall to the other side. Hit escape. Now, if after the fact I've built this wall and it is on the wrong side, I can just click the control right here and it flips the wall after the fact. However, what if I want to flip all three of these walls together? Well, Revit has a very kind of cool way of having multiple things selected, but it's a little tricky to understand. So the way that it works is you hover over one wall. You're not clicking on it. You're not selecting it. You're just hovering over it. So it highlights. And then when it highlights, you hit the tab key. And then when you hit the tab key, it selects all of the walls that are in that chain together. And then once they're all highlighted like that, then you click with your mouse. And then it actually selects all of the walls that are in that same chain. And then if I want to flip all of those walls, I hit the space bar and it flips the walls from one side to the other. And so that's a really fast and easy way to edit walls after you have them actually placed. Black Spectacles is the home of online learning for architecture and design. With your Black Spectacles membership, you can watch the rest of this course and any of the thousands of video tutorials we've built to help you learn architecture software and to prepare for the architecture registration exam. Visit blackspectacles.com now to get started.